Hello. We're going to talk about how market trends that have helped industrial historian products from on-premise deployments to the cloud and what GE is doing to help customers along that journey. I have with me Steve Pavlovsky, Director, Product Management, Digital Plant for GE Digital. Steve also serves as the Principal Product Manager for GE Digital Prophecy Historian and Data at the Edge. He has more than 30 years serving in the automation and industrial data management uh, areas and is an industrial internet pioneer, and he's a firm believer in the value and the power of data. I'm Mark T. Hosky, Control Engineering Editor and Content Manager since 1994. Steve, welcome, and thanks for today's discussion. Oh, thank you, Mark. I really look forward to uh, sharing you know, what we're doing with you and, uh, and your audience. Great. So uh, what market trends are being addressed by your latest uh, products and services? So, you know, we see our customers always trying to, to drive productivity out of their plants, right? And the question is really, how does some of the new technology that's, that's coming uh, into, the, into the market space, uh, how, can we help them, how can we help them meet those challenges? And so whether that's from, you know, in, in my case, right, focusing on how do we enable them to generate value from the data that, that's coming from across the enterprise, and if that's driving visibility across their sites to combining OT data with their other business data um, and, and giving access to data that's coming from the equipment to a broader set of individuals so that they can turn that data into, into, into value. Um, and all, all while you know, reducing costs, right? Because cost, cost of, of operations, cost of IT, right? That's a big challenge that our, our customers are facing. So you know what, as you mentioned, right? What we're what we're doing right now is is taking advantage of of the cloud, and and certainly a cloud's been around a long time. But you know, as I was as I've been engaged with customers again across my across my thirty five years at this point, we really started back in the 2014, 2015 time frame working with industrial clients. Um, around cloud-based technologies and monitoring of equipment into the cloud. And it's funny, in 2014, that was really a pretty foreign concept. Um, they, you know, and that's not that long ago, right? That's seven years ago. And, and folks were really pretty leery about putting their business data, their process data in the cloud. And that's really changed, right? I mean, we often, many of us use Office 365. We, you know, so our businesses and our acceptance of the cloud have changed. And so now really we're taking advantage of how do we help them uh, take their OT data, use cloud-based technologies to, to store and analyze that data and deliver them, you know, scalability and reliability that comes with cloud. Um, be able to push their OT data into data lake so it can be combined with other sources of data in their business, transactional data, customer complaint data, whatever they may need um, so that they can create more value from it, all while doing that in a, in a reduced cost from uh, method from you know, traditional on-prem server deployments. What kinds of customers would be interested in these kinds of offerings? Yeah, so... It's it's really interesting. Um, our customer, you know, the customers that we typically call on span the gamut of discrete and process manufacturing, along with utilities, whether that's water, wastewater, um, oil and gas, um, power generation, grid, even in the new some new new spaces in terms of uh, renewables management and um, and smart grid uh, players. But really, for us, we think that the the key um, users of this kind of technology are going to be those mid to large size enterprises uh, that have multiple sites, right? If they have a single site, sure, they may be able, they may be able to wring a little bit of IT management um, cost out by using cloud-based technologies. And so we'll certainly engage them on that, but it's really those customers that are gonna be able to create more value from the data by looking across their operation, by bringing the data together from multiple sites into a common uh, into a common data store, that's going to allow them to perhaps compare performance of one site versus another, or look for trends at one site and do they apply at another. So, so we believe it's the it's the multi-site customer uh, who's who's going to gain most uh, from uh, from this technology. 
certainly COVID has had a lot of impact. So what are some of the main market drivers behind uh, these developments? You know, so um, you are absolutely right. So data vi visibility to data via remote means, um, you know, whether that be, um, you know, just accessing data from, from home via company VPNs, right? But that whole notion of how, you know, I, I have friends that worked in plants and they continue to go into the plants, but the plant, the number of people in plants dramatically reduced, especially folks that weren't hands-on on the process. So it could be line supervisors, team leaders, many of them learned to work from home and the technology really changed around uh, remote access to the data. And, um, and, and the cloud played a role in that um, for many of these customers. How did, and so what we're doing is taking advantage of that, you know, the continuous pressure to drive productivity, you know, and, and, and helping them leverage the, the vast, um, uh, you know, the vast loss of value so, um, of, uh, that's possible to be generated from OT data. So McKinsey did a study back a, a, a two years ago or so and basically determined that one to two percent of the data that's produced by our the equipment in our facilities is actually used to generate real business value. So there's a 98% waste stream, right, of, of value, you know, fall off. And that could be because data is not actually collected. It's not put in context. It's, you know, a whole wide variety of things. And so, you know, this, you know, with IoT um, becoming more prevalent and more data coming from the equipment and, and processes to cloud-based technology, a place to store that data, Combine that with what, what we deliver, which is high efficiency operational historian technology, which fate, which delivers the same kinds of interfaces that the, the people on the shop floor are used to using, whether it be the HMI SCADA or visualization tools. Maybe they want to do uh, data analysis in Excel like they've done for many years, right? It, you know, there's a unique opportunity here to, to take the power of the cloud combine it with a true operational historian running in the cloud connected securely to the equipment in the uh, and, and the equipment in the plant and make that data available um, to a wider variety set of customer of, of users uh, to be able to generate more value from that data so you've mentioned a lot of this already but what are some of the key benefits of using this these technologies yeah so um, you know, thank you for that, right? So, yeah, I did mention some of them, but you know, there's there's a there are a couple of other key things that come out, right? So, yes, combining data from across multiple sites, what does that mean? It means number one, I can create additional value from that data, but it also means from a cost perspective, in the past, I had IT resources at each site, managing servers at each site. And that cost can be re greatly reduced to by centralizing in a scalable, highly available cloud application. So it can be I IT cost uh, reduction. There's also value from using cloud-based technologies because this, the application can be managed in a way um, where there are zero downtime upgrades, right? There's upgrades of industrial process systems. is a It's a big issue for customers that are running whether they're running 24 hours a day or not, right? They don't want to have to take plants down uh, to do software upgrades. And if you think about a plant-wide historian, right? They may, you know, it's either IT people work on a weekend and there's there's business risk to that update. The cloud d does away with that because what you're able to do using Kubernetes-based technology in the cloud is basically upgrade in place. You can spin up an image and shut down the image and the client application doesn't know that an update has actually occurred uh, on, a, on a technology like this. So we can now provide better reliability because we also get um, data replication capabilities that the cloud gives us. So we can provide better reliability uh, to the systems along with better uptime uh, because the cloud's more reliable than on-prem servers. Um, and we reduce downtime driven by the upgrade cycle. So we can really deliver much better uptime and reliability and access to that data 
in conjunction with creating new value and delivering at a lower cost. So it's really, you know, all, more value, lower cost, and better performance. It, it's just, uh, it's a great uh, combination. What are some of the differentiated features? You know, so for us, what we we took an approach um, different from, say, what some of the competitors have done, which is we want the we've taken the the same core historian technology that we use on prem, and most of our customers use that on a Windows server. However, two years ago, we actually introduced a port of our core product to Linux. And what that port to Linux has enabled us to do is use the cloud native technology to manage it and deploy it in the cloud on behalf of customers. And this is not an application where we're hosting on behalf of customers. Our goal is to actually create a basically a service in say the AWS catalog that a customer who's an AWS customer, they're paying for infrastructure, they want an operational historian, they can basically go into the AWS catalog and spin up that service and, and consume uh, consume the, our product and have it automatically spin up. Basically push a button and 20 minutes later, historian is up and running for them. And, now, and then they can start configuring and collect the data. So simple to deploy. Um, it just it just becomes another line item on their AWS bill, and and then we'll we'll end up getting paid you know through AWS. So very simple from a uh, uh, from a transactional perspective. Very simple to get running. They can also shut it down very quickly. So if they have a, a short term project, they need to spin up a historian, store data for six months because they've got some problem they're trying to solve. Spin it back down. So they didn't have to buy a server. They didn't have to buy a traditional perpetual license. There's much more flexibility in terms of the use of the technology. But at the same time, it's a true operational historian, right? So all of the things that customers expect in terms of data aggregation, averages over time, compression, very efficient data storage still come along, um, even though we're deploying in the cloud. And that's somewhat different from approaches either some of the traditional um, historian players have taken as they've built effectively different solutions in the cloud, or some of the sort of new entrants into the time series market, you know, they can store time series data, but they don't, they don't deliver what an operational historian user would expect in terms of query modes and aggregation and tools like uh, access to the data via Microsoft Excel that a normal historian user would expect. So, so I, we're very confident that our, our offering is going to provide very unique benefits to customers who are, want an operational historian, want it in the cloud, and, and see the benefits of running it in the cloud. So you've already talked about some of the differences in terms of installing the new product versus the, the old way. Um, are there challenges associated with installing or implementing this kind of thing? Sure. You know, it's, you know many, many, you know, a very high percentage of, of customers today are doing some sort of data storage. So the, the biggest challenge isn't, isn't the green field, right? If you're starting from scratch, as I, as I articulated, you know, push a button in 20 minutes, it's up and running. No, no sitting, you know, um, you know, at a computer screen doing an install of software on a server. It's push a button and, and come back in 20 minutes. But now you've got the, what am I going to do with the legacy data? Right. And so luckily um, for our for the customers that choose this solution, we have um, sort of depending on whether they're a GE historian customer or whether they're they've got legacy data in third party systems. If it's a GE customer, because it's a port of our existing product, the data file formats, configuration file formats are the same. So it's quite easy for us to deliver tools that help those customers migrate their existing on-prem data to the cloud. That'll be a very straightforward process. So they can just basically take their collectors that are running collecting data from their industrial processes or machinery, point them to a new cloud destination. We'll be able to move the historical data files and, and configuration, and they'll, they'll come up, 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 up and running very quickly. For customers that have legacy sources of data, whether that be SQL databases or his other historians based on SQL or competitive products like OSI Pi, 
we actually have um, data exporters and ingesters, so we can help them migrate that data. It's just going to take a little bit longer because the data has got to go through a transformation process to move from those legacy systems uh, into the cloud. But once that's done, right, they'll they'll that data will they won't lose their old data. And they'll be able to take advantage of the uh, of the new capabilities that uh, they'll gain from uh, from a, a consolidated uh, historian running in the cloud. Uh, talk about the life cycle a little bit. What, what type of maintenance is required and, and what, if anything, is different than previous uh, versions? Yeah, so I mentioned that briefly earlier, right? So if you think about um, a traditional on-premise deployment of a historian, there's periodic software updates, operating system updates, uh, application updates, um, and so you know, there's, there's going to be downtime of, you know, to take a server down to install a Microsoft patch or re, you know, at least cause a reboot because a, a security patch has gotten installed uh, to, you know, doing a, an operating system upgrade, which is a big challenge. Many customers, frankly, they don't really do operating system upgrades. It's just every four years, they, they move to new servers with new operate, new server level operating systems. Um, and then they have to reinstall software. They have to do software updates. And so there's, there's associated downtime. So the cloud actually eliminates all of that. Um, zero downtime upgrades, um, you know, the, the, the maintenance of the application while still in the control of the user, they can choose when to take uh, version updates. Um, and, and the nice thing is they can, they can update elements. They can update UX, they could update the core archiver or the, the query service independently, um, but it all will happen sort of in place and, uh, and without downtime. So the maintenance of a, of a cloud-based application uh, be, is wildly different. Um, and then in addition to that, our historian, like some others on the market, right, are, we use a purpose-built um, compressed archive file format for data storage. So there's no there's no relational database management uh, required either, right? Some other products that exist on the market use a SQL uh, database for uh, for sort of the, the data storage architecture. And that typically is gonna require a database administrator to do work on a periodic basis. In our case, it's really just, you know, um, data gets stored in files um, and then the customer's really gonna need to decide, right? Uh, as, you know, how, uh, how long do they want to store data? Maybe they need to store data for some processes for a year and then they want the data to go away. We have other customers that have 15, 18 years worth of data that they continue to maintain. Um, in our case, they don't lose any performance by holding on to that long-term data, but they'll pay for storage. And so part of what the cloud uh, we believe will give the customers is um, uh, a choice on sort of, hot storage where they'll want to keep, maybe they want to keep six months or a year worth of data and then they'll want to move um, move older data to a lower cost storage option in the cloud. And so that uh, will further reduce their, uh, further reduce their, uh, their cloud uh, expenses. What types of channels are offering and supporting the product? Yeah, so today we, um, we leverage a global network of uh, software distributors and representatives along with our own salespeople. And that's, um, that's you know, how we sell our traditional on-prem uh, applications. And that's going to continue to exist. They provide great service to our customers um, and they're going to continue. Uh, they're going to continue in that. Um, now, I will say... Um, I think I think there's some learnings that um, we all have to do in terms of global footprint. I do expect that there'll be uptake faster in certain markets, North America, Europe, even perhaps Latin America. Um, you know, China may be a laggard, right? Putting data in the cloud in China is obviously a different uh, a different story than it is uh, for a North American customer. So there'll be some there'll be some different uptake by region, um, and. You know, that may also cause us, you know, regional differences may cause us to drive to different cloud sub platforms. We're going to focus on AWS first. Uh, Microsoft Azure is a fast follow. Um, we already provide connectivity from our on-prem solutions to AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and Alibaba Cloud for, for customers in Asia. 
Um, and so we'll have to take a look, right? Is there not, is there a requirement for us to move and actually run natively on Alibaba Cloud uh, for the for that customer base? So um, there'll be some learning on our behalf, and and we'll we'll listen to the customer base, and and we'll we'll adjust as uh, we'll adjust as needed. Um, but the other the other channel that we see uh, augmenting our current sales channels with, frankly, is the cloud suppliers. Um, they their sales teams. Um, are hungry for solutions for their customers. And by putting our products in the cloud suppliers marketplace, you know, they, uh, as, they're, as they're talking to their customers, we believe that they'll, they'll share the fact that Historian is there because that'll drive uh, consumption of the cloud platform and deliver a better integrated solution with, uh, with, their, other, um, with their other cloud-based applications, right? So as we build, for example, the Historian product, all of the traditional client user interfaces that a customer is used to today exist or will exist with this product, but we'll also build uh, connections to native cloud services. So we'll build, uh, or we're in the process of building an export to, I said, we're starting on Amazon to uh, Data Lake, uh, their Data Lake application, which stores data on their S3 storage. So customers will be able to set up a periodic export from Historian into the data lake structure. And then any, any data lake user who's running an application can query the historian data in conjunction with their, their order data or whatever other data they're storing in the data lake. So again, trying to create easy ways for them to get more value from the data. So it's not just, you know, how do we, how do we help them bring all of their OT data together in a common data store, but also how do we help them simplify the task of combining the OT process data with their other sources of business data uh, to, to drive new value. When did the, the cloud historian become uh, available? And then what type of training is available or, or needed, if any? Yeah, so good, no, great question. Um, so we are actually just working today with early adopter customers. Um, so we expect this to be, you know, sort of fully in the market um, as we get into 2022. Um, we have full training on the core historian, so that's that exists today. You know, we'll we'll be doing some uh, additional training modules on you know how to how to configure the AWS environment and you know how to just how to get the historian spun up and any other uniqueness in terms of uh, specifically, uh, for example, um, how do they connect their the, the data collection software that we provide that's on prem. Right? How do they make the secure connection to the cloud? Because that's one of the key things that, that we're, we're working here on is making that secure connection simple um, and simple to deploy and simple to manage. And so, um, you know, today, if you're all, everything's running within sort of the, the network perimeter of an enterprise, that doesn't necessarily need to get worried about as much, right? If I've got a machine in a plant and I'm collecting data and I'm sending to the, that data to a server that's also in that plant, I don't have to really worry about the secureness of that actual connection. Once the data starts traversing the internet, right? You know, you can set up a VPN between the cloud instance and the site, but that's a royal, um, that's a royal pain. And things that, you know, we believe that that'll, that'll slow down the adoption of this kind of technology. So <clears throat> we have uh, experience within our business. So GE's uh, Predix platform does certificate-based encryption between uh, my collectors that I use today as I send data up to the Predix cloud. Um, and, you know, we're working on implementing similar technology to make it simple to configure secure uh, communication, pushing data from the site, up, up to the cloud-based uh, historian. So, um, you know, we'll get all of that work through and then, uh, you know, then uh, we'll open this up to the, to the general populace. What type of online sales and support tools are available? Yeah, so that's something that we're, we're working on right now. I think one of the key things that will help our customers, because there's lots of collateral about, you know, the value of historian and, and, and how they can use historian to, to collect data. One of the tools that we're building right now is, um, is an online cost calculator that would help them actually understand hey, if I'm running on-prem, what might the cost savings look like as I run, as I run in the cloud? Because we do believe that, that 
that cost savings will be significant and will allow, um, will, will encourage customers or, or be one of the key reasons why customers want to, uh, want to move in this direction. So um, do you want to talk a little bit about some typical competitors in this area of the market and maybe some of the key differences in the product offerings, sales or support? Sure, sure. Um, I mean, in the, the, the Aviva is our um, is a big player in this market. They over the past several years, right? They've had their own product, which they acquired through the acquisition of Wonderware. Um, in 2014, they bought uh, the eDNA Enterprise Historian, which was focused on the grid market. Um, they've actually recently announced the end of sales of that product to be in the 2026. Um, and then they also in they completed the acquisition of OSI Soft, uh, whose Pi product. Uh, is clearly the, the market leader. And Pi has had a, uh, you know, Pi built a, a cloud-based architecture to help customers bring data together. Um, what, what's different between what we're doing and what OSIsoft did was it's really the same technology stack. So customers that are using Historian on-prem, it's a, it'll be a natural migration because it's, it's effectively the same product. Um, and so we believe that uh, that the customer base will uh, will appreciate that um, distinguishing factor, and the fact will allow customers to run, you know, actually plant level historians and integrate that data with a cloud based enterprise historian, and still have the same interfaces and still have the same tools can, can be used. We do see that as something that's um, that's very different. Now there are other folks like Influx Data. Right, Influx Data has um, has on-prem and, and edge solutions, and they also have a cloud-based solution. But they're not really a traditional um, uh, industrial operational historian. Right, they store time series data, and so we believe that while while they have a great product for the use cases where it's fit for purpose. Um, they don't provide the, the the standard operational historian capabilities like like give me the average of the data uh, over the last 24 hours. That seems simple, but when you think about compression that's used in an operational historian, dead banding, and you're not necessarily storing every value, but being still be able to effectively recreate where data would have been stored and what those values were and be able to return an average, even with compressed data formats, um, that's something that 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 operational historians do that um, that time series databases um, per se don't do, and so we do see uh, some real value to the industrial customer base to continue to use uh, and leverage the power of the cloud and the the performance and reliability and scalability that the cloud is going to provide, combined with the capabilities of an operational historian. So, um, you know, we. We believe we're carving out a, a unique niche, and uh, and customers will uh, will value what uh, what we're delivering. You mentioned the the wide breadth of interest in the the product and the product uh, offerings. Are there customers currently using the new product and service? You mentioned the early adopters are, are at it, and then mm -hmm. you know maybe mention some comments. Any early. Uh, uh, what they're saying about the use of the, the product, for example. Yeah, so um, so we are working with uh, some early adopter customers. Those early adopter customers were existing uh, G Digital Prophecy Historian customers. Um, one in particular has got 32 plants. And what they're doing right now is um, they're, they were in the process of actually moving to uh, AWS infrastructure and running our software on virtual machines in the cloud. Um, and what we're working with them on is, you know, is that really the right plan for them or do they, would they actually prefer to bring all of that data together in a common environment um, and have all the data in a common data store that they could then reference um, across their organization. So there, you know, there's a lot of learnings going on here about the, the cost benefits of, you know, on-prem, we know, you know, they're helping us, you know, what's the cost of managing on-prem? What's the cost of running in VMs in the cloud? What's the cost of running in a, uh, in a, in a as in a cloud native application? Um, that customer happens to be in the aerospace industry. So we're also uh, doing some work. Um, there's extra 
data protection requirements, they have to run in a GovCloud environment. So we're doing some we're doing some work there to potentially uh, uh, potentially be able to run in that kind of a data protection uh, environment, um, which is um, which is really uh, it's interesting for us. And it's not it's not because of the way we're architected and the underlying cloud services we're building. It's uh, it's not lots of extra development work. It's just more testing and validation work uh, that we have to do to certify our product to work in a GovCloud. So um, so yeah, there's lots of um, lots of learning coming out of partnering with these initial customers, and uh, and we're using that to make sure that the product you know hits the mark in terms of creating value for you know those multi plant customers that uh, that I articulated in the beginning. We think we'll get the most value from it. Thanks. So, so future is always tricky, but you, you want to talk a little bit about what's next in the product services development pipeline? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I mentioned before, right, we're starting off on AWS. We will do a fast follow on Microsoft Azure. You know, we know Azure's got a big footprint in the industrial uh, in the industrial cloud space. Uh, we're starting with Azure uh, for both some internal and some particular customer reasons. Um, but you know, we, we do plan on moving there. Um, and then I think the other piece is, you know, continued addition of interfaces to cloud native services, right? So I talked about, you know, ability to export, uh, historian data into data lake applications, but there's going to be other applications. So if I think, you know, staying within the AWS world, you know, we're talking to the AWS team about uh, building a native interface to SageMaker, which is their analytics platform. So a SageMaker user who wants to run an analytic, um, maybe they don't want to move the data into the data lake. Maybe they just want to interface directly with the historian data. Um, and so does that make sense for us to do? Are there other third-party cloud services? Um, you know, we've already been talking with some other analytics suppliers that have both on-prem and native AWS suppliers about, um, and who all, frankly already have interfaces to Historian, talking about our move to Historian and how that may help them and their customers. Again, maybe they need to spin up a Historian for a month or three months to collect some data so they can do analytics. How can we partner together to help uh, accelerate the creation of value uh, for those customers? So I think that the next real wave will be uh, linkages to uh, other applications um, in a way that makes it simple to create additional value from the data. Because that's really, that's really the, the, the critical piece here is people don't, people don't buy historians or subscribe to them if they're cloud-based to store data, right? They, they, they get value from looking at that data that's been stored either from a visualization and making operational decisions or compliance reporting or analytics, right? So it's really all about the, how do they, how do they query that data to, to make business decisions? And so the easier we can make that, um, we see we create more value. Great. Are there other things that you'd like to discuss that we didn't cover? You know, um, I did mention briefly, right? Um, we have, we have lived in this, you know, hybrid on-prem cloud world uh, for some time, right? We, GE has its previous platform. You know, we, we've started as a, as a platform, as a service and migrated more to application as a service platform for uh, the power generation in oil and gas space uh, with that product platform. Um, but we learned a lot in there. And one of the things uh, that that, delivered to us was, was we do know that there are customers that, that do need this ability to collect data and store it and share it with cloud-based applications. So even customers today, if they aren't ready to move to our cloud historian, and, and we're not actually quite ready, as I said, but as soon as we're ready, if they're, if they're not ready, we do provide um, uniquely in this space, I think, native cloud interfaces to AWS, Azure, Google, and Alibaba's IoT interfaces. So in the case of AWS, it's IoT Core. In Azure, it's IoT Hub. In Google, it's IoT Cloud. And I'm not sure what Alibaba's IoT interface is. But we do provide customers the ability to start um, to start today, right? They can, they can take data from historians across their enterprise, bring subsets of that data back into native cloud repositories, 
um, and then put that data into, you know, in pipe it into an analytics platform or whatever. So they can start today. Really where we're headed is how do we help them do that faster and, and, and store that operational data in the cloud, which is really the next step. Um, and then, you know, and then take advantage of it, but just don't store it on-prem and in the cloud we're moving to store only in the cloud and take advantage of it. What parting advice might you offer? Yeah, so I'm gonna go back to that, um, that um, comment that I made about the McKinsey study around really only one to 2% of the data that's generated by our machines turning into real value for companies' businesses. Um, that is kind of unconscionable to me as someone who cares about um, the collection and, and normalization and storage and distribution of data to create business value. I, I just think it's a shame. So, you know, I, I urge people to really be thinking about what data is coming from their equipment and how they can generate value from it. The technology platform that's going to constantly be changing in terms of the tools available to create value, but really be thinking about what, what could I do with this data to create value for my business? Or what data do I need to, what problem do I wish I had data to solve, right? That's sort of two sides of the coin. Because the sooner you start collecting data, the sooner you start learning how to create more value from the data that's being collected, you know, you're going to be further ahead down, down the digital journey uh, and, and have tools and, and capabilities in place uh, that you haven't had before, but can drive productivity in your business. Finally, uh, where can people go for more information? Well, first, I mean, you'll have my contact information through, uh, you know, through this, um, through this interview. So you can reach out to me directly. You can also go to uh, our website, www.ge.com slash digital. And, uh, and you'll be able to find information about Historian, including the new cloud-based Historian uh, uh, on, uh, on GE Digital's website. Great. Thank you so much, Steve Pavlosky, Director of Product Management, Digital Plant for GE Digital. Steve also serves as the Principal Product Manager for GE Digital's Prophecy Historian and Data at the Edge. We appreciate your discussions and perspectives and insights. I'm Mark T. Hosky, Control Engineering Content Manager. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.